This is a very complicated case. It's a legal one, and you have to be asking many questions. We know that you are online out there. HLN TV social media producer Anna Gonzalez, also defense attorney Eric Schwartzreich. They're here to answer some of the questions. Eric, great to see you, Anna, as well. Anna, we have been asking questions and talking about this case, and boy, people are really passionate when they're talking about this. I want you to direct some of the legal questions to Eric. Sure. I mean, what we're seeing is just calls and hundreds of comments on facebook.com slash HLN. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're getting consistently uh, per post, almost one post had almost a thousand comments. So that's how we're continuing to see because of your calls and your messages and your tweets to us mm -hmm. that this case continues to be top of mind. So let's take some of the mm -hmm. questions. Um, so right now we have from Hayden Seeking You. This was mm -hmm. sent to us at HLN TV on Twitter. By law, does Sanford PD have to know where George Zimmerman is at all times since he has not in custody and he still needs to be interviewed. Eric, legally, does the police department have to know exactly where George Zimmerman is? Because in terms of his attorney, his attorney is saying that he's really in hiding because he fears for his life and his wife's life. Do they have to keep in constant contact with him because this is an ongoing investigation? Susan, that is an excellent question. There is no legal obligation whatsoever for the police to know where he is. He's under no legal obligation. George Zimmerman has not been arrested. He's not on pretrial release. The issue, though, is there's a bounty on his head. He's, his life is in danger. So you can bet a million dollars that the mm -hmm. police know exactly where George Zimmerman is and that they're, he's in protective custody or they're watching him or they know where he is. They know where he is, but there is no legal obligation whatsoever to follow him or to know his exact whereabouts. Yeah, there's a lot of angry people out there who do want justice and want that man arrested. So he says that he is fearful, according to his attorney. I want to go to the next question, Anna, which regards a big topic here regarding the Stand Your Ground law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the questions we're seeing over and over. So why does the Stand Your Ground law apply if Zimmerman followed Trayvon Martin? This is a big one, Eric, because when we heard the 911 calls, we heard the 911 operator say to George Zimmerman, are you following him? And George Zimmerman said yes, and he said, you don't need to do that. So that to me was big in this case. Was it to you, Eric? It's a big deal, but the issue is this. The standard here for a conviction is reasonable doubt. The standard for self-defense under Stand Your Ground, you have to show either the police, a judge, or the jury, is you've got to show by a preponderance of the evidence. The Stand Your Ground law does not give you a license to gun down someone in a hoodie, mm -hmm. but it does give you a, a license to stand your ground, to meet force with force, and be reasonable. We don't know. There are so many conflicting reports, reasonable doubt, evidence, conflict, lack of the evidence. We don't know what really happened. As a recent report, and a witness says, the police leaked this, that George Zimmerman went back to his car and that he was approached by Trayvon Martin. We don't know, really know what happened. We know George Zimmerman is saying from the get-go that this was self-defense and he was threatened and he was approached. The stalking element, we don't really know if that happened. He doesn't have a right to stalk him. But if he was approached and if he was threatened, he has a right to stand his ground. And, Eric, that leads us into our last um, question here from Anna about stalking. What does this viewer mm -hmm. say? Yeah, that's right. I mean, people really want to know all of the details. And this is from Jay on our Facebook page. The fact that he left his vehicle with a gun to stalk someone he saw as suspicious looking and being mad that people like that in his mind always get away, doesn't that show an intent to kill or do harm? I, I guess that's the question that everyone's asking, Eric, including the investigators. Is that the center of the investigation, exactly what happened? And they're trying to piece together a timeline using witness accounts, using cell phone accounts, and trying to put together a timeline with what people saw and what happened, Eric. You know, the famous saying that there's three sides to every story, yours isn't the truth. But there's also two sides to every coin. The prosecution is going to use the fact about the comment that he made, made and try and show that it shows perhaps premeditation, malice, or some type of intent. But the defense can take a look at it and say, oh, wait a minute, look at his mindset. It goes to show that here's someone that was afraid, that perhaps was, was scared, and that's what's going on in his mind, that this is someone that is afraid and scared. His statement is, that he want, is not that he wanted to hunt him, to kill him. It was that these people always get away, and now later we're learning that there are some reports that he was confronted by this guy. Mm -hmm. So it depends upon how you look at it here. The defense is going to say one thing and the prosecution is going to say something completely different. Very true, as in most cases. Eric Schwartzreich, thanks so much for laying it out for us. A very convoluted, complicated case. Anna Gonzalez, thanks so much for bringing us the questions from our viewers, because a lot of people have the mm -hmm. questions. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. And we, as you know, Anna, are following every angle of this story here as well on our website. Anna's following it too, HLN TV.